once of all. My holy gaze is you, Spirit brooding over me. Until my holy gaze, until my holy gaze is you, Spirit moving over me, till I look more like you. Until my holy gaze is you, until my holy gaze is you, Spirit moving over me. I look more like you Until my holy gaze is you Until my holy gaze is you Spirit is ruling over me Till I look more like you Until my holy gaze is you Until my holy gaze is you Until my holy gaze is you Hallelujah, Hosanna, Hallelujah, Hosanna, Hallelujah, Hallelujah, Hosanna, Hallelujah.
We are in such a time in the body of Christ where we will fail if we intend to do church as usual. Men have been deprived of the realm of reality, the realm that matters. Men have been deprived of the protocol that ensured that they make contact to spirit life. So all what men had was dogma, was doctrine that does not have the ability to as much as grow them organically into the stature of the Christ. And many that have all kinds of doctrine, head on to it, to their own prime disadvantage, in the sense that it became a strong code, but strong code not unto the order of the spirit, but strong code unto an order in the flesh. And one of the challenges become their inability to be able to unlearn that which they have learned, that they may begin to learn the ways of the spirit. Because that which they have learned has become so much a structure. And it can no longer produce results because it will require the protocol of the spirit to ensure that a man is alive on daily basis. And every doctrine a man thinks he knows may not be able to be proficient and profitable for him in times and seasons. But he clings unto the operations of God as a spirit of life and a spirit of truth that intent to take you through a journey, through a path in the spirit, to places where are less trekked by many. And it is possible that what you have held on to as a doctrine for many years. May not necessarily be that the Spirit of God is emphasizing now. Until you lay hold of the new dealings and operations of God, you will now realize that the revelation that was apportioned unto you in time past, which you have established a doctrine upon, may not necessarily be the correct emphasis of God according to the Spirit of truth. So it is demanded that we, as believers, that intend to grow organically in our advancement in the agenda of God, must understand the current emphasis of God. Upon the prime call and that mandate, we must be current and aligned with God. And every season for us to be able to decipher the operations of God. And if we are handicapped in being able to decipher those operations of God, it is possible for us to die. Like men, men are perished like one of the beasts. Why? Because we do not know. Neither do we understand. And as a result of that, the whole earth will be out of course. Because every jurisdiction of God was apportioned unto songs that they may keep it according to order. But these songs are not current unto God. And many more times God wonder, he will ask, why are you not appearing within the quorum system of God? It was simply because many have not appeared before God in Zion. And they could not go from strength to strength. Why? That which they have eaten for a very long time has already failed them. The Bible said that it is possible that the arrow of the mighty man can break. And them that stumble, if they understand the way of the spirit, they can be given with strength. The Bible speaks unto us and let us understand that it's possible that the youth shall be weary and they will fail. But they that wait upon the Lord, there is a technology upon Mount Zion that has the ability to ensure that a believer is current with God. And no matter the Bible said that they will only go from strength to strength as many that appear before God in Mount Zion. Have you ever asked yourself where is the location of Mount Zion? It will require a journey in the spirit to take you to that location of Zion. Zion is not a physical place. Zion is a place in the spirit. Zion is a location in the spirit where there are innumerable companies and thousands of angels. Among that, there is also a cloud of witnesses. There are also a, the precise teachers and mentors in the spirit which are far actually as the spirit of judgment made perfect. It is in Zion that God comes to you as a spirit. The Holy Ghost comes to you as a teacher and they begin to integrate you. It is in Zion that the immortals come together as a quorum. And each and every one of them begin to fashion upon you require weapon of warfare so that in your spiritual warfare you can be relevant in times and seasons. Is it in Zion that they teach you the technology of the spirit on how you can be able to have spiritual intelligence to know what you ought to do at times and in season? A man that does not always appear in Zion will be out of alignment with God. He will never be correct. The Bible said, as many that appear before God in Zion, not them that come, but them that appear. It will require an appearance. It will require you to take a journey from the flesh into the spirit so that you can understand the realm of operation where with life is transmitted. One of the greatest goals is that of God is that Him being the fountain of life come to a point where He can transmit that same life of pressure unto men. One of the greatest challenges of God is that men become a requisite conduit to where His life form can flow. And when the life form of God begins to flow within your spirit, every possibility of God finds expression. There are all kinds of attributes of God. Love is part of it. The healing anointing is part of it. Every dimension of God is find expression when the life form of God is educated within your spirit. And one of the only ways you can journey through the life form of God, which is the Zoe kind of life, is when you begin to journey into the spirit. It is within the spirit realm of creation that the school of the spirit is initiated. 
Many have understand the way of school in the flesh. That they know that it is possible for a man to go to a school in the physical. And it's approved and certified. And then he can become a lecturer. He can be given a... He can become a technocrat in a field of operation. That they will call you an engineer. They will call you a scientist. Why? You have gone to a school in the physical. But men have not understand that for you to stand and speak for God and an oracle. You must go to school in the spirit. And the way you go to school in the spirit is to ensure that you cling onto the Holy Spirit as a tall guy. And you take you to the realm of the spirit. Where Zion is a place. It is in that place that you meet innumerable companies of immortals. And they begin to school you aright. Begin to exchange upon you the life form of God. That is where impartation and apostolic speaking is done unto the spirit of men. And men become strong men. And men that were men, men become strong men. Why? David gave us an understanding. He let us understand that it is possible that he can gather men that are weary. Men that are down broken. Men that are in death. When they gathered before David in the cave called Adula. Suddenly he took them into a protocol in the spirit. And he began to school them and build them. It was not long ago that these men became the mighty men of David. They begin to slay a giant like unto David. Why? Because he, they understood the way of the spirit. And they understand the teaching system of the school of the spirit. And as many of them that were faithful in the school of the spirit became strong men. And we saw Shama. We saw Dodo. We saw Aji. Men that slay a giant. Men that slay men. Men that slay part of the sons of the Anak. Because the sons of the Anak terrorized the Philistines. They terrorized even the Anak. Am -am they terrorized every tribe except their own tribe. And the time came, they enter into the camp of the Israelites. And they begin to terrorize the camp of the Israelites. They are conquered. Let me tell you. Many more times, the enemy of your enemy may not be your friend. Other times, the enemy of your enemy may be your friend. When, you are, when the enemy of your enemy wants to conquer your enemy, he becomes an enemy. When the friend of your friend wants to conquer your enemy, he becomes an enemy. You see, you don't understand my proof. What I want you to understand is this. When giants come within a region, what they intend to do is to colonize. What well, both the believers are the unbelievers. So when they conquer the unbelievers, then they now say, why can't we try the believers? Let's see if we can conquer them. But those are the times when the believers must stand as the strong code and say, Toss flash and that go and no more further. But it is possible that if a giant conquer an unbeliever, he know that they believe the unbeliever may be just a test and experiment. The believer may be hard for him to conquer. But when a giant is able to conquer the believer, we are we are we are deprived as a people. We have come to a point where the church is looking for solution in the world. When the world should run to the church for solution. Why? Because we don't understand the way to conquer giant. In ancient times, when giants come to the face of the earth and they say we want to kill like unto Goliath, suddenly everybody run away. But men that have stood in the school of the spirit, men that are dwelling in cave like unto Adulam, come. They say, I'll come in the name of Yahweh Elohim. You may come unto me as a giant, but I'll come in the name of Yahweh Elohim. And the man that understands the way of the spirit, understands the way of slaying giant. Don't no wonder you have all kinds of spiritual warfare. Killing snake, killing serpent, killing all kinds of giant. You are being viewed effectively for such a time such as this. That a time is going to come when a pandemic will come upon the face of the earth. It's a time where there will be the revealing of God's, the manifestation of the sons of Elohim. You see, let me tell you, there is a council of Elohim, but there is a council of the benign Elohim. There is the council of elders. According to the legislative council of God, there are things that the gods will never do for mortal men. There are things that elders will never do for God. The Bible says, I have put the earth under your jurisdiction. It's either you rise and rule as I am ruling in heaven, or you perish like unto men. Amen. God will never descend to do the work that me and you will do. And that is why many more times you look at though God is handicapped. No. God is not handicapped, but his strength cannot find expression through the sons who have called themselves up. No one that in the book of Psalms 82, the Bible said, God stand in the midst of God. And he began to judge. You see, how long will you uphold your righteousness? How long will you allow injustice to continue to rule? It is never my fault, it's the fault of the sons. And he say you do not know, so you will perish. Why? Because you allow darkness to prevail. It was the intention of God that men become representative as part of the benign Elohim to represent every dimension of God. But when men are handicapped in representing God, suddenly darkness begins to expand its frontiers because it is within the jurisdiction of darkness to continue to conquer. Sons of light must rise and say, Toss far, shall thou go? And no more for them. That is why you must understand that the flesh will always be a disadvantage. Until you begin to take a journey into the spirit, you may not be strengthened by God. I welcome you again unto Zion. I welcome you again unto a cave called Adullah. Where great men can be built. And everything I spoke unto you was to let you understand that there is an establishment in the spirit called spiritual establishment. What God intends to do to establish a man is to ensure that he exchanges his life 
for the life of the man. And every two or time of your life, you have a life that you were born with. That life has not helped you thus far. It will require a kind of exchange of life that you take upon yourself the is way kind of life of God. So that the immortal dimension of his life, the eternal dimension of the life, and the everlasting dimension of the life can find expression in your life. And as a result of that, you become more victorious, more than a conqueror, to be able to thrive and to survive upon a dying time such as this. I say this just to let you understand that we are in dire times. We are in a time where we can no longer be doing church as usual. Now it's like you know, until the time where only them that know the Lord their God that will be strong can do exploit. Now is the time where even a pastor that doesn't know God will be in bondage. We are in a time where one decree from abroad shut down an entire country. The whole of countries in the whole world. They shut down countries, shut down churches by one decree. Now it's time. You are only them that know God can survive. Coronavirus is too small to shut down the voice of two sons upon the land. If coronavirus can shut us down, can, can people be that obedient? When have you suddenly become obedient to the federal government of Nigeria? You a very disobedient fool. Now everybody wants to abide by a stupid law not to pray. A stupid law not to go to church. Why? So if you continue like that for the next 10 years, Christianity is wiped out. Every religion is wiped out. So what would they introduce? You don't understand the times we are in. We are such like the time in Babylon. When Nebuchadnezzar make a graven image and say everybody must bow to this. Let there be no God that can survive until somebody upon whom the spirit of the Holy Ghost dwell upon. And Daniel rose and he proved that it is impossible for that God to continue to rule. It is impossible for any idol to continue to prosper. Not when he's here alive. He said, We are willing to die if need be. Now is the time where two sons must rise, living witnesses of the reality of God. That are willing not just only to live for God, but to die for God. I always say, We are not called to die for God. But if our living is threatened by our death, we are willing to die. This was how Christianity was passed down to you. It was passed down as a religion of war, it was passed down as a religion of violence. The Bible says, from the day of death of the now, the kingdom of God has always survived violence. Only violent men take it by force. There are many more times in the body of Christ where it will require violence. Who told you that men do not keep for God the scriptures? God commanded David to always go for war. He killed many uncircumcised Philistine. That was the job description of men like Daniel. That job, the job of men like Samson. All of the type of Daniel we are warriors. Every type of Daniel. From Jephthah to Ordner to Samson. All of them were, were warriors. They were judges. They judged according to the order of God. And they killed many more people. Many more times God will say, If you are not circumcised, let the entire country die. He can make the Israel that come to Nigeria and wipe out everybody. That was the same system of oppression that Islam is using. As a political religion to ensure that through war, they are able to conquer the land. Right now, we may not be in war of bombs, but we are in war of ideas, wisdom and intelligence. How that they can manipulate us using a weapon of fear and suddenly we bow as if we don't know our God. No, we must rise and refuse to submit ourselves to any dictate of darkness. I want you to understand that the new world order and the operation of darkness will never stop. They are preparing the ground for the coming of an antichrist. They are preparing the ground for the coming of a millennia that if you are not prepared for, you may never be able to survive. They are making everything comfortable for them. What they are trying to do is the wisdom of the eagles so that they can take you to a place of advantage. You see, the way eagle fly, eagle will not fly, eagle will not fly to you on the ground. He will take you up there because you know when you go up there, you will no longer breathe. So there, naturally, you don't have to do anything for you. If it will leave you there, you will die naturally. What they want to do is to create an atmosphere that will be unconducive for believers to survive. So that even when they now say, well, I live as believers, you cannot live. Why? Because everything that they have created is anti-God. So naturally, you bow to their system. Not because they say you should bow, but because they have created an atmosphere that is unconducive for you. And until we understand the operation of darkness through wisdom, and establish an intelligence in God, we may never be able to survive as believers upon the face of the earth. That is why God is raising again two witnesses 
men that are established spiritually according to the order of God that they may be able to understand spiritual intelligence and the wisdom structure of God so that they can have a recovery system for us I, at least in the days where we are behaved of light after Malachi up to March it was a whole year about 400 years that God did not speak it was what we call the dark age where men were looking for God the Bible said there was a time where the word of God was cast you don't know we are such a time as this where the word of God is cast truth is no longer found why? because a system was revealed and the entirety of everything you know to be the word of God is gone and men have fear as a weapon we are such a time like this again in the body of Christ where we don't know where we are going to as a believers even our fathers are more confused these are the times where if you are not careful they will be silent the Bible said the word of God was cast and God could no longer talk it looked as though God has forsaken the Israelites but now it's time where two living witnesses can rise we are prophet can come and say by this time tomorrow we are the people that can warn us when there is danger we need sons of Isaac as again to rise men that have understanding of times and seasons now is not time for the multitude to know God has no restraint either to conquer with many or to win with a few what God is looking for is just maybe only man many more times we are caught up in the euphoria of Christianity and we neglect our normal operations with God and that is as a result of that we have we have we have been out of alignment we are not calling with God we don't know what God is doing I want you to understand that it's a cry out to going deeper in God that is a cry for us to be more established in God in this thing like never before now is not time to run away from prayer no now it's time to embrace it as a lifestyle now it's not time to run away from worship now it's time to embrace it as a lifestyle now it's not time to run away from fasting now it's time to embrace it as a lifestyle now many people what they profess will know whether they are right or they are fake because the activity is taken away if you don't have Christianity as a lifestyle because now we are returning back to the early church to the time of the Antioch where they saw the believers behave like Christ and they called them Christians we are returning back to those days why? because we are upon the time where everything that looks like activity in Christianity has been shut down it will never be convenient it will require a man that has a hard body for God and has it as a lifestyle to be able to survive now you have the reason not to pray. Now you have the reason not to fast. Now you have the reason not to even study. Why? Because everything is shut down. But do you know if you have it as a lifestyle, you are already addicted to it. Because without it, you have no other option. We have embraced a religion passed down onto us with all of its attendant weaknesses and carnality. As a result of that, we are deprived of growing in God. You are called to know God, but after you know God, you grow. We grow in this journey. And until believers grow effectively well, you can never represent God aright. The best of you will be a man feeble, laden with all kinds of infirmity. There is a realm beyond that which you operate. There are always higher realms in this operation. You will determine how long you want to remain because God has no restraint. You see, my spirit will not always strive with men. So if the general of Asia says he doesn't want to do it again, God will never force it. He will strike the shepherd and the sheep will scatter. That is the season well upon which we are. The shepherd has been striked. They have been given a new thing to pursue after. And now we are scattered. We are confused. We just, just realize that actually we've been following men. We have not been following God. And as a result of that, men gave us all that we follow. We do not want to care to check in the archives of heaven. What are the immortals saying? What is God saying? Should we remain within this mountain? Or should we retreat? And everybody follow after the order of men look through time men like Paul said we are willing to die for this thing say woe unto you king should we obey men or should we obey you yes, sir. many more times they say don't preach in the name of Jesus do not go to church in the name of Jesus many went and they were killed many died your life is not important you better waste it for God you will feel a better reservation in eternity the Bible said that there were many in the book of Hebrews 11 that they, after he finished mentioning this one conquered this by faith this one conquered this by faith he said many people believe and receive nothing some of them believe and they are believing them to death but their names are not worthy to be mentioned in the archives of faith so you call many people and call them the fathers of faith but there are people that did many things that in their faith they believe and they die and their name was not worthy to be written anytime you mention their name the place will rat because they have become living witness to the reality of God Stephen believed God. He went to buy to make to as a deacon. As he was coming, they gathered and they stoned him unto death. When he saw Jesus, he did not say, Kill my enemies. 
Father, let them be scattered. Let me live again. He said, Father, have mercy upon them. Forgive them for they don't know what they are doing. Let my life become a living sacrifice so that because of me, many can rise. As a result of that, the Bible said there was a young man named Paul. So, it was within him that they gathered all the, all the clothes of Stephen and they killed him very well. Immediately, the mantle fell upon him. And you saw what Paul did. Why? Because a man died. The Bible says, except the corn of wheat fall to the ground and die. It abided alone. But when he fall to the ground, he resurrected again. Many more believers will need to be perished and persecuted for the sake of this. Any man that died in Christ did not die. He lived them all. Say, I am the resurrection. I am the life. He that believeth in me, although he is dead, he will live. And he that live and believe in me will never die. You must learn to conquer death as a spirit. There is death as a process. But there is death as a spirit. The one that ends with D, T, T, H, is a process. The one that ends with D is a spirit. You must come to a point where you are not afraid of death. If it comes, you cast it out as a spirit. But you must embrace the process of death. That you die daily so that Christ can be the day. You know about the baptism of the Holy Spirit, the baptism of fire, the baptism of water. But you've not come to understand the baptism into his suffering. How that Jesus Christ has had to go through meditates and die so that he can live again. There are many realities after death. We are ministers of the third day. Ministers of resurrection. Everything about growth in God will require that you die so that you grow. Nothing grow until you die. When you plant any seed, you must die before you grow. You cannot grow because you are too alive. Ah. Jesus said, except a man lay down his life and follow me, he will never be able to see. Ah. He said that God is a spirit. Whosoever that comes to him must not believe that he is. And he is the reward of death that he doesn't seek him. But Jesus can begin to speak in the book of Luke. He said, Luke 11, he said, whosoever that must follow me, must first of all deny himself and take his course and follow me then. He said, whosoever that tried to preserve his life will lose it. But whosoever loses his life for my sake will forever gain it again. One of the systems we must embrace in this time is the system of death. And losing our life for the sake of the Christ. Now is not time to be obedient to a stupid Stupid government policy. No. What is God seeing? Have you ever asked yourself that kind of question? A prophet, an apostle, a teacher, every minister is never called to be right with men. He's called to be right with God. Many more times when you are aligned to God, you look misaligned to men. But you want to be aligned with men and lose the trophy of God. Many people will lose their account because they are looking for the approval of men. No man will ever approve you. According to any man upon the face of you, you are not qualified. You are not called. In fact, let me tell you, if God call you, if you go and meet your mother and say, I'm called, she may tell you it's a lie. Because the calling of God is stronger than anything a man can understand. The vision of God is bigger than even you. You see, John in faith, my friends. The Bible says, Believe in the Lord thy God. First, second Chronicle 20 20. Believe in the Lord that God will be established. Believe in His prophet, you will prosper. Yeah. Do you need that? You need to be established more than prosperity. Yes. You don't understand. Yeah. You don't understand. Yeah, yes. Prosperity is to have fresh, to have milk to take every day. Establishment is to become the blessing, a benefactor and a beneficiary. Yeah. That you can also be able to communicate the same thing to another person. I can speak to you, do you believe in me as a prophet? I will prosper you. But when you believe in God, you will be established and you can prosper another person. Yeah. Ah. Spiritual establishment ah. is a necessity in the life of a believer to bring him to a point where he can become a benefactor of God and a beneficiary. Ah. That you can come to a point where you can become a life giving spirit. He ah. said the first Adam was what? A living soul. The first Adam prospered by the breath of God. Yes. But the second Adam became a life giving spirit. The second Adam became established in God and he was made by God and now he can give life. Which one is better? Spiritual. Many people prosper spiritually but they are not established in this one. Establishment speaks about stability. Your ability to be stable. Establishment speaks about ordination. Establishment speaks about appointment. Establishment speaks about Seek about a legal authorization by God. A man can prosper and not be authorized. When a man is authorized, he becomes not just only a communicator, but he becomes a custodian 
and a guide you on certain truth and mysteries. It will require men that have been established in God to be able to communicate the same level of reality unto others. If you are truly established in God, your generation will know. No man is established in God and he will not be known as a lie. And while you are establishing God, God allows his spirit to become mobile in you. So that anytime you speak your word, it becomes spirit and life. As I'm speaking to you now, you can see the word coming as light entering into your spirit. Jesus said the word I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. They have the ability to fashion life inside of you. And they have the ability to be transported. What we are requiring now in the body of Christ is men that have been established in God. Men that have gained stature in the spirit and they are established in God. They must have gone through the process of death, burial, and resurrection. And now as they have resurrected, they can never be limited by any vice of the devil. We are in dire times, my friends. Terrible times in the body of Christ. Many will weep. Many will be sorrowful. Only them that know the Lord their God will be strong and do exploit in this time. Many things you think you know before, they will never walk again. Paul said, my little children, upon whom I traverse from them, that Christ be firm in you. It was a cry of a shepherd that he bring you to a point where you have become established. Not just that you follow me, but that you are established in Christ. Because you know that there is no limit to which that which you can become if you are established in Christ. He said, but me, I wish above all things that what? You prosper and be in good health. But according to the order of God, you are not just only to prosper and be in good health, but that you should prosper others and ensure that you can make other people be in good health. You understand? The testimony is not that you are not sick, but that you can heal another person. The testimony is not that you are prosperous, but you can prosper another person. I get what I'm saying now. We may be ineffective as representative of the kingdom if you have not been established spiritually. I'm telling you the truth. You may never be relevant. Spiritual relevance comes when a man is established in the kingdom. You will never be ineffective if you are established spiritually. Hallelujah, hallelujah, Hosanna, hallelujah, Hosanna, hallelujah, hallelujah, Hosanna, hallelujah. Hallelujah, Hosanna, Hallelujah, Hosanna, Hallelujah, Hallelujah, Hosanna, Hallelujah. Hallelujah, 
Shabaleta, Rabba Bella, Kabesurata, Babella Tanata, Ata Babelato, Bambelia, Babola Tata, Shalaba.